Hello and welcome back to Redirecting. In this video, I'm going to be talking about one specific accuser of R. Kelly. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a video clip that I'm going to show where she was doing an interview with a news network, with one of the major news networks. And in this video, in this interview, she was very, very emotional about her experience with R. Kelly. As a matter of fact, they had a relationship for two years, uh, starting at age 16, and it ended at age 18. Now, during that time, um, she said they had a two-year relationship, okay, and... At the end of that relationship, she decided to sue him and say that he had been abusing her and she wanted money. And so they ended up settling out of court for $250,000. So I'm going to go ahead and roll the clip of the interview and I will be right back. Now, as you saw from the interview, she was very emotional there. Um, she was giving a reason, saying that uh, she didn't know what was happening and uh, she didn't know that this is what adults do. And uh, she kind of put on an, a whole air of innocence, like she was just so confused and didn't know what to do. Now, for those of you who will look at that and say, well, that's enough for you. This is what I want to say. I want to make an uh, I want to make a very good comparison here. I want to make a really good comparison of a victim and someone who was complicit with what was going on or someone who was doing this by consent. OK, first of all, I'd like to say that I am not a fan, nor have I ever been a fan of R. Kelly. As a matter of fact, I'm not even familiar with any of R. Kelly's music other than the fact that others have said is very explicit. But I personally have never been a fan of any of his music. I, I just haven't. And um, I can I can certainly see like he and people like Usher and uh, P. Diddy and all of these singers and rappers and things of that nature. They've always been surrounded by women who knew what they were all about. OK, these women and these young women knew what they were all about. And I chose to say young women instead of young girls, because many times when you're trying to portray yourself as innocent, you want to be called a young girl. OK, uh, but technically these are young women. Sixteen is a young woman, not a young girl. And so this whole thing of, oh, she's innocent. Um, we need to look at this a lot closer. First of all, parents. You need to be more in tune with what your children are doing. If you want to consider them children at age 16, you need to know what they're doing and what they're up to. OK, because if you're letting them go out and flaunt about with celebrities, men, she's a young teenager, 16 years old, a young woman, and you're allowing her to be in the company of a man, then where is the innocence in that? 
Okay. I want to talk about real and true victims because a lot of focus is put it, being put on a lot of women or young women who were in these situations knowingly and willingly to state with your own mouth that you had a two year relationship with R. Kelly. Um, then there's a question of whether or not there is innocence. Now, I want to go on the record again as saying that I'm not a fan of this man. I think what he's doing is just very lewd. You could tell he's a very, very sexual, deviant type man. Okay? But we cannot project innocence on everyone who says that they were abused or raped or attacked or whatever when they are there willingly spreading their legs. Okay. Now we're not talking about a 10 year old, 11 year old or 12, 12 year old. We're talking about young women who inserted themselves into an environment. Many of them, um, who had a certain way about them in the first place. We as the so-called black community cannot sit here and try to pretend like there's not some strange lewd behavior going on among our young people. We cannot pretend that they are not out here doing things. They're not getting pregnant for nothing. Okay. They know what their body parts are able to do. They know what it means to be with a man. Many of them getting pregnant at age 12, 13 and 14. They know what is going on. And to hear this young woman say, I didn't know that this is what happens. I, did, I, I didn't know this. This is what adults do with the tears all of these years later. We've got to be more realistic in, in identifying what is happening in our community and taking responsibility for how we are raising our children. Because guess what? I have seen and known personally real and true victims of rape and molestation and violation. I have known them. I know what their tears look like. I know the pain that they are going through. And so for this young woman and many others, like the woman who eventually took Bill Cosby down, and again, I am not trying to defend either of these men. But we as the black community, we've got to face our own demons within. These men are guilty of many things, but so are these women and so are these young women who are out here doing things that they should not do. Because when you look in biblical standards, from biblical standards or a biblical standpoint, if you're not all into Western culture. These young women that we call teenagers, there was no such thing as a teenager back in biblical, biblical times. Okay. These young women were actually women. They were women. That being said, they were fully aware of their bodily functions and what their bodies were able to do. And they had a standard that was taught to them a standard of righteousness and holiness, not allowing themselves to even be in the presence of a man like that, much less letting him hug you or kiss you, regardless to him saying, okay, can I kiss you? And you say, no, then he says, well, can I hug you? And then you, you proceed to hug him. And then he reciprocates with kiss. And then from there, who knows where it went? So this thing of trying to say that a 16 or 17 year old, even 18 year old is innocent We've got to understand that what we are doing is we are giving our young girls a pass to be tramps at a young age. We're giving them a pass when we say, look, if someone does this to you. And I'm talking I'm not talking about the really, really young ones. I'm talking about those who are old enough to know better. This girl, 16, knew better. She knew better. That does not mean that R. Kelly had a right to do this. What that's simply saying is that there has got to be some accountability all around, not just with the men, but with the parents who allowed this, who allowed their 16 year old to be in the company of this man for as long as she was and for the young woman herself and knowing exactly what she was getting involved in. When he first asked for that kiss, if you didn't really want that kiss, you would have gotten the hell out of there. 
And so there was a desire of lust being stirred up in her as well. This is why you have to be very, very careful with your young girls, because if you allow them to be around men, their emotions, their hormones are turned on and you cannot allow a man like R. Kelly, who is a celebrity, a rich celebrity at that, to keep your daughter in company. Many of the parents knew what was going on, but they were complicit with it just because he's a celebrity. If you don't want your young girl sexually aroused or sexually involved, then why are you letting her be in the presence of this man? Because you know what can happen. Now, I know many of you will not agree with what I'm saying here, but this goes back to the lack of accountability in the black community. We don't want to accept blame for anything. We think that we can do no wrong in regards to certain things. And right now I'm talking about women, your young daughters, your, your, the parents, the fathers. Nobody wants to take responsibility. We want to point the finger at everyone else when something doesn't go right in our lives. Now, we know that there is a system set in place, but this right here has nothing to do with a system. This has something to do with the lack of rearing our children properly. This has something to do with a parent making a decision or a choice to allow her 16 year old daughter who was already into her hormones to be around a young man like R. Kelly. R. Kelly is always being accused of something because he is a sexually explicit man who sings what he feels. You think those songs were just songs that were just written? No, he feels this stuff. Usher, many others who sing in this sexually explicit way, they are singing because this is what they feel. Now, a lot could be said about the music industry and what it has done. But when we as a community of people, we want to sit back and we want to pretend like, like one of the people in the news report said, all of these other celebrities who had tours scheduled with R. Kelly, everyone wants to dis distance themselves now, want to pretend like they didn't know that he was already accused of these things. This stuff is decades old with R. Kelly, or I'm going to say at least a decade or more. All of this pretense, like you didn't know what this man was all about, is laughable. And all of these young women who want to pretend that they were completely innocent in all of this, and parents knowingly allowing your children to be in environments such as this, if we as a people had a righteous mindset as a whole, think about this for a moment. There was no interaction with a young man back in biblical days unless you were being courted and about to be married. But hanging around men, sitting on their laps, letting them hug you and kiss you. The scripture tells you that a man should even touch a woman. Why are you even allowing him to touch you? This to me falls under the, under the category of a silly woman laden with sin. Now, America has created this in-between age of teen and preteen and all of this stuff. But in Bible days, there was no such thing. And I know this is a hardcore truth for some of you because you have this Western mindset and you want to pretend like black people are just victims in everything. No, we are not victims in everything. Some things we do to ourselves. Like the crimes in the black community, no one is holding a gun to your head to hold a gun to your brother's head and blow his brains out. No one is forcing you to sell drugs to your own people. No one is forcing your young daughters to open their legs to anybody. We're not talking about rape here. We're talking about young women who knew that they had legs to open in the first place. And they knew what R. Kelly and all these others were going to do with those open legs. So all of this pretense, like I, I just didn't know to please save it for the birds. Because again, I know real victims, people who really were violated, raped, molested. 
When I say real victims, they are bona fide real victims where this happened to them and this messed them up. This has messed up their lives, their minds, their thinking. Not some young girl who went over there dressed for the occasion. Let me correct that young woman went over there dressed for the occasion, knew who R. Kelly was, what he was about and what she was getting into. So if you get this in your mind, take this. Take this with you. Understand that this middle in between age of teen age was created by Western culture. But in biblical times, think about Mary, the mother of Yahusha, the one who the world calls Jesus. I believe she was 15 years old when she married Yosef. Many other examples in the Bible of the ages of these women. Western culture wants you to be in a perpetual state of childhood so that you can ride that on into the sunset. A perpetual state of youth. This is why you have 50 year old men going around rapping and wearing um, youthful clothing, looking like gangster rappers at age 50 when you're supposed to be on your way to being a grandfather, perhaps. But this perpetual state of youth have us thinking that um, we could just get away with things just because we, we have that youth card. I'm going to cash in the youth card. I didn't know adults do this. I know I'm 16. I have hormones and I have sexual desires, but I'm going to cash in the youth card. I felt abused. I need some money. I'm suing you. You're rich. Give me money. Oh, $250,000. Thank you. That's good enough for now until the movement opens and I can come forward with tears, pretending like I'm still hurting from this. Many of our people do not have discernment. They don't desire discernment because we want to keep wallowing around in this cesspool of mess that we ourselves have created. Don't think that we're in the land of our captivity for nothing. We are here because the Most High said that we are a wicked and perverse generation. The Most High said that our sins have separated us from him. And this is why he says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. But my people are stupid. This is what the Most High says, y'all. He says, my people are stupid to do that, which is good. They know not how to do that, but to do that, which is evil. They do it very well. So all of this mess that we see happening, this is a result of sin. This is not a result of innocence. That young woman was there by consent, whether the laws of this land here say that she was innocent or not. This is what people want to do. They want to pre pretend like folk are innocent. Now, I reported on a case yesterday where there was a cop who found a 13-year-old girl who was uh, missing. Okay, he is a person in position who's supposed to protect and serve. He was sent to look for her. He found her. When he found her, he started a relationship with her. She was 13. She had a baby by the age of 14. Now, in that case, I don't care what her race is. That was a situation where he preyed upon this young child. This young kid or whatever you want to call her. He was sent to protect. And then he laid out the groundwork and says, I want to mentor her. That was, in my case, that was a predator. But I'm sorry. Everything does not fit that scenario. Everything does not fit that scenario. Some of our young women, whether they were taught to do right or not, some of them are acting on their own sexual impulses. And I know that's hard on some of your ears, but it is what it is. Because we are not training them up in the way that they should go. When a young person decides that they want to venture off into all of these unknown territories. There are situations where they may have been raised in the church. They may have been raised right, but that goes to show you that goes to show you that many of them have their own mindset. When you are in Western culture and you're surrounded by filth all the time, 
going to school, hearing filth, seeing filth, watching it on television, seeing it up and down the streets, in the communities, at the malls, at the stores, in the streets, filth, filth, filth. Many times our young people, they get taken in by that. Even if if mama and grandma raised them in the church. So in some scenarios, we can see that. I've seen where young girls were raised up in the church and they grew up and they went out and became buck wild. But mama and grandma did teach them. But why did they go buck wild? Because Western culture is so toxic, so damaging that we are surrounded by the filth of this culture. And so you'll have young girls who will even use the system, they'll say, well, technically, according to the law, this is, this is rape. And so I'm going to sue him for some money. Now you have some states that will allow 16 year olds to be married with the permission of their parents. Some states have it at 15, some at 17. It depends on what state or what their laws are. Now, the point I'm trying to make in saying this, if someone is old enough to want to be married, as a matter of fact, we met a a old woman around here. She's an old Gentile woman, old white woman. She told us that she was married at age, I believe it was 11 or 13. She may have been married at 13, but this was some 80 years ago. And her husband, I believe, was 16. And when she talked about their relationship, she said at age 11, she knew how to run a whole house. Knew how to run a whole house. Got married at 11 or 13. Okay, very young. Husband being 16. So don't tell me that these young women today don't know what the hell marriage is and what their body functions are. This generation I would say are definitely victims of this society and what they have put out here. Because I do remember another story of an older black woman who said that at age seven, she knew how to run a whole house and she was married young as well. I believe my, my husband's mother was married at age 16 as well. Mama B beautiful, had beautiful children and I have her beautiful grandchildren. She was, she was married at age 16. We have a picture of her. But she was like a woman, knowing how to take care of a house, knowing how to raise children. And so when I hear a young woman, 16 years old today, want to sit sit back and pretend like, I didn't know any better. I'm so innocent. He took advantage of me. If Mama B were alive today and she could see this, she could see this young woman carrying on like that. She'd be like, girl, please. I was 16 and married, knew how to take care of a house and a family well before that age. So save it for the birds. Save those tears for the birds because at age 16, I knew what to do and countless others knew what to do. That young woman is a result of this society. This is what it has produced. It has produced this type of 16 year old who wants to play games because they know society has loopholes in there for them if things don't go in their direction. Things don't go as planned. She probably wanted to be R. Kelly's number one and he wasn't going in that direction because he had two, three, four, five and who knows how many others. And some young women don't like that. And so I'm sorry, that is my take on this. We have got to start taking moral responsibility for what is happening in the black community, whether it's stuff like this, whether it's the violence that we do against each other, the way we treat each other, how we're raising our children, how we're taking care of our families, how we're forging ahead in our future, how we're preparing for the future. The ball is in our court at this point. It should have been in our court. As a matter of fact, it was, but we have made the choice and the decision to sit back while all of this mess happens in the black community and want to pretend like we don't have work to do. Want to pretend like everything is out 
to, to be against us when we ourselves are not doing the best that we can to help ourselves, to teach our own, to raise our children. Now, I understand about the curses, but we can't ride the curses on everything because the curses are only there to show you where you need to improve, not for you to use it as an excuse or a band-aid or a crutch. The curses are there for you to improve and repent and turn from your wicked ways. I'm sorry, these days, young women, 16, 17, 18, you know better. You know exactly what you are doing. And again, many of them are raised by parents who didn't do their jobs. But nonetheless, they are definitely at that age where they know no better. As a matter of fact, think about those who are pulling triggers. You have young people killing, like the 12-year-old and the 14-year-old the who killed their mother for some crazy reasons. Don't think when one stabbed her in the back and the other shot her. Don't think that they didn't know what the hell they were doing. So tell me now how they are innocent. If you can stab your own mother in the back or you can blow her away with a gun. I don't want to hear nothing about innocence. We as a people, we need to get it together. This mess is out of hand. We're so busy talking about what other races are doing. But this right here, all of this nonsense, this stuff is off the chain and it is dirty and rotten to the core. And as long as we sit back and want to pretend like these things are not happening, like our people are not messed up in the head, it's going to continue to happen this way. Some people are too afraid or too chicken to come out and say what it needs to be said as it relates to the black community. But it's a reason why worldwide we are in the predicaments that we are in. It's not because we are some innocent victims. It's because we were so full of sin that the Most High said, I'm going to turn my back on you. And that is exactly what he has done. And until we repent, we're going to continue to see his backside. Okay, family, I'm out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel. And also, comment, share, like, and subscribe.